from day to day, uh, personally, when I come into the office, first thing is making sure that tapes meet their deadlines. So confirming with the actors that they've sent off tapes that are due or sending through tapes ourselves that we are sending, uh, reviewing tapes, making sure actors have feedback on anything they might need to redo. Uh, obviously, the inbox will be full of information on, you know, things that our clients are on set for or on tour for. So making sure everyone has the information they need, replying to production, to casting directors, processing tape requests, processing meeting requests, basically making sure everyone has the information they need. Um, responding to clients who have questions about anything about their jobs, about their submissions, about their headshots, um, booking in meetings all that kind of stuff. So it can vary from day to day, but obviously prioritizing what, what is urgent, what needs to meet a deadline now um, versus, you know, what can be addressed later, uh, but also making sure everything gets covered. <laughs> In the broader picture, agents will do everything. Well, the, I can only really speak for how Fiona and I work, but everything from recruiting or going through applications. So looking through who's applied or going to graduate shows and seeing who's entering the industry, to then having meetings with people who we think could fit on the books. Um, so then using all that information to decide whether to offer representation yeah. or not. If they accept, you know, going through everything from A to Z with them, what, what kind of work do you want to do? What kind of work don't you want to do? Where do you see yourself in the industry? Do we think that's realistic? How can we support you in that? Getting to know everyone as well as possible, basically. What are your skills? What are your, What is your training? What is your family like? You know, sometimes mm. that comes into commercials and all that kind of stuff. Um, storing all the information, processing all that information. Ideally, they'd have Spotlight. So we're looking at briefs. Every day, the briefs the casting directors are putting out on Spotlight. We're reading those briefs. We're then cross-referencing. So briefs will have very specific details. So must how, how does that work? So just uh, like on, on, the, on the point of Spotlight, how does it work? Like, do you do you receive uh, some messages directly from casting directors or are they just putting out like some, some kind of castings with some criteria and you have to go through all of them? Yeah, so on Spotlight, Casting directors can choose to put their briefs out only to agents or to agents who are on their lists because they can create their own lists or to agents and actors who are unrepresented. So it's really up to the casting directors mm -hmm. uh, who they want to put their briefs out to. And it's up to agents to have relationships with the casting directors who choose to work from specific lists. Um, so we will be seeing, like Fiona and I will be seeing briefs from all the casting directors that we've specifically reached out to, to be on their lists. We'll be seeing briefs from agents who've put out their briefs to all agents, uh, casting directors who've put out their briefs to all agents. Um, and then we'll be reading those. So it will say, must be available, this and this and this. Must be this age, this ethnicity, speak these languages, based here all these different things that come into, uh, that we need to take into account. And then we go, okay, this person could be suitable. So we'll sub, you know, we'll submit it, but first cross-reference with their calendar. So we'll store all the client's information uh, on, on Tagman or whatever system, you know, yeah. an agent is using, cross-reference their calendars. Um, also, we need to know them as well as possible. So if we're like looking for someone who, you can sing in this range, for example, I need to know the musical theatre performers very well. I need to know what their voices sound like, what their capabilities are, so that I can make sure they match that description. So we're cross-referencing everything and then submitting the people who are absolutely right for it. How many how many applications like that you receive on average on a day? How many you need to go through? <laughs> it really varies from, from day to day, but enough for your head to spin for sure um yeah and then i've lost my train of thought now oh, sorry. no that's fine it, I mean, it happens all the time um sometimes if there's something very specific we might do an extra push so on spotlight you i don't know if you know this or not but we can choose which headshot of yours to use for the application mm. so if you have one smiling one and one serious one and this character is a friendly character we mm. use a smiling one and we can add little notes so if they say 
must be able to speak Russian um, and be of Russian heritage, then if I'm submitting you, for example, I can use a smiley headshot and then I can say, is actually Latvian, but speaks Russian fluently. And then they know and they can mm. consider that before they call you in. Um, and then if it was something where they were like, we're looking for someone who has their own podcast. <laughs> then I could also never. <laughs> <laughs> then I could also, you know, send depending on whether the casting director is open to receiving it or not. They'd usually say in the brief they'd either make their contact details available or not, or say please don't, you know, email us or please don't call us or please do email us or whatever it is. Uh, we might send an extra push saying. Hey, here's Andre. He runs his own podcast. He has this and this experience. He speaks these languages. We just wanted to flag him because we think he's ideal for the job. So that's sort of the the application process. Yeah. Sometimes it might involve having calls. Um, I had a musical theatre casting director call me the other day, talk to me for about 20 minutes because the role was so specific. What he was looking for, and he was like, "You know, your client can mm -hmm. they can they fit this type of thing?" Um, tape requests, meeting requests will then come in with all the information. So we'll obviously process that on the client's calendars. We will speak to the client. So you know, if I send you a request, I'll usually also text you and say, "Hey, yeah. please, please read this. Please confirm. Make sure you're happy with all the details." Um, sometimes there's something very specific. Maybe you need to be comfortable with sitting in water for an hour or something. So I might need to call you or text you and ask you if you're okay with that. Um, if offers come in, we'll call, we'll say, you know, congratulations, you've been offered the job, here are the details. Mm -hmm. And then it's all the production information. So making sure production has your measurements, your address, um, you know, any, any information they need. It's then reading the contracts, making sure the contracts are correct they're in line with you know industry standards in line with equity we might negotiate so you also have to have this that kind of knowledge as well yeah 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 <laughs> definitely and and i mean sometimes it's a matter of obviously making sure we're well informed or up to date with what the industry standards are what equity is but sometimes we're also learning on the job so fiona and i well fiona cross belongs to the pma so it's a, an association that regulates sort of how agencies work. So within that, we can speak to other, other agents and say, what is your experience with this and sort of help support each other. Uh, we can obviously speak to equity, equity. <laughs> we can speak to equity um, and yeah, just make sure that, that we are keeping ourselves up to date with all that kind of mm. stuff. Um, so negotiating contracts, if we say absolutely not, that is not enough money or you know our clients should really have that transport covered or whatever it is we will negotiate that with production sometimes your clients will have special needs whether it's dietary requirements whether it's neurodivergency that has specific requirements whatever it is mm -hmm. we're communicating that making sure everything from a to z is sorted then in terms of the job and then and of course two of you right yes <laughs> <laughs> There's just two of us. Um, and then making sure you get paid. So chasing payments, processing those payments. Um, and then making sure that things are aired correctly. So for example, there have been cases where you get paid for your image to be used for a year within a specific region and then someone is in Spain and is like, hey, my face is on a billboard in Spain and it's two years later and then we're on, on the phone or on emails to production like, hey, you are client money because mm. you're still using their image. Um, and other times it's fun things like posters to promote the film or the trailers out for the next film that's in cinema or whatever. Mm. And that's a lot of fun and attending shows, you know, going to the nationals, um, press night, going to the previews of a film or the client that's coming out. You know, they are, they are rewarding bits mm. of, of really just getting to then share those moments with our clients once they've uh, landed the jobs on, and are in the midst of them and the whole promotion and everything. So that's pretty exciting. Mm. And then making sure that we use that to help push them for the next job. <laughs> and I think I've probably only covered a quarter of it now. <laughs> <so>. yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> 